Yeah, I have uh, joined. So shall I start sharing the screen? Good morning, Nina. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hello. Good. Hi. How are you? Turn on your video or maybe it's not coming in? No, it's okay. I can turn on my video. Yeah, okay. Good to see you. At least virtually. Yeah, after a long time. Yes. So it's time. So uh, you know the uh, first uh, invited talk this morning is by Professor Nina Gupta, uh, who's a brilliant mathematician uh, of our country, uh, and she has been uh, bagging many awards and honors, uh, uh, about which we are very happy and proud. She's uh, she's an invited speaker for the ICM, the International Congress of Mathematicians, which is uh, happening. Uh, uh, next year, she recently won the Ramanujan Prize, and there are many, many other prizes. But uh, uh, I'm sure you are here to listen to her. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so congratulations, Nina, and thank you for accepting your invitation. And uh, My uh, please, uh, you can begin your talk on finite generation of Sabaji Brother polynomial algebra. Is the slides visible? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ghurkare and the organizers for inviting me. Uh, I know this is a very prestigious conference which has been held and we were probably supposed to have it in the previous year, but thankfully we are having now. And uh, it's good to see it's in a, a bridged mode that both online and offline is there going on. Uh, today I will talk on finite generation of subalgebras of polynomial algebras. Historically, this has been a very important topic in the research of uh, commutative algebra. In fact, uh, even before the beginning of commutative algebra, this has come into the structure. So this is a joint work with Professor Amartya Kumar Datta and Nobuharu Onoda. In fact, this is a follow-up work of one of their papers uh, on this finite generations. So we have just extended this results to two dimensionals, complete local ring. So let me give you a brief uh, summary. So introduction. So uh, for me, all my rings are commutative rings with unity and uh, there are experts in the audience, but still for the sake of general audience, I'm fixing some notations. So for me throughout the talk, K is a field K bar is the algebraic closure of K and C is the field of complex numbers. By domain, I mean an integral domain and by K domain, I mean an integral domain containing the field K. So, and for an integral domain R contained in a ring A, A equal to R square bracket N would mean that A is isomorphic to a polynomial ring in N variables over R. So that means A is generated over R by n many elements T1, T2, Tn, where this T1, T2, Tn are algebraically independent over R. So with this notation, let me first pose a very simple question. So let uh, X be an indeterminant over K and A is a subring of the polynomial ring Kx. So Kx is a polynomial ring in one variable 
and suppose A properly contains K, then I can ask a very natural question, is A necessarily a finitely generated K algebra? So Kx is finitely generated. The question is whether any subring is necessarily a finitely generated K algebra. And this is the theme of today's uh, talk. So for this uh, case, very nice case, K is a field, the answer is yes. In fact, uh, the proof is also not difficult. Uh, it can be solved by an MSc student. And let me give you a hint, some general steps towards the proof. So since A properly contains K, I can choose an element F in A, but which is not in K. And then this uh, A will contain the subring Kf and is contained in Kx. So now this F is a polynomial in X. So from here, we can deduce that X is satisfying an integral equation over the ring subring Kf. And therefore, Kx is integral over Kf. And since Kx is finitely generated, it implies that Kx is a finite Kf module. But Kf is Noetherian ring and it is a finite Kf module. So Kx is Noetherian Kf module and A is a uh, Kf submodule of Kx. Therefore, A is finite Kf module. And this being Noetherian, it implies that A is a finitely generated uh, K algebra. And this is the proof. So, yeah. yeah. So, we have that A is a finitely generated K algebra. So, this was a very nice situation where A is a subring of Kx. Next, we assume that A is a subring of Kxy. So, it's a polynomial ring in two variables over a field K. And suppose A is a subring of Kxy then is A necessarily a finitely generated K algebra? So note that this previous proof, we cannot uh, extend because here we could say that if you take any element, this X was integral and so the whole KX is integral over KF. So similar such thing will not be true here. In fact, in this case, the answer is no. And we probably have all seen this example several times that if you look at the subring generated by x, x, y, x, y square, and so on, then this is a, a not a finitely generated K algebra. In fact, this is not even a Noetherian ring, but Ekin in 1972, he constructed an example of a Noetherian subring of Kxy, which is not even finitely generated. So which is not finitely generated, but the subring is Noetherian. So such an example do exist, though this example is not so easy to describe, so I am skipping the proof. So this uh, problem of finite generation is basically related to the Hilbert's 14th problem, which he posed in the 1900, the first ICM. And so his problem is, uh, he asks that, uh, suppose L is a uh, subfield of the, uh, field, uh, which is a field of fractions of polynomial ring in n variables, x1 up to xn, and A is the intersection of L with the polynomial ring kx1 up to xn. So then A is a subring of uh, the polynomial ring kx1 up to xn, and it is easy to see, it's not so obvious that L is the field of fractions of A. And note that since A is an intersection of a polynomial ring and L, which is a field, a is a normal domain. So now Hilbert had posed this question, is A necessarily a finitely generated K algebra? So it's easy to see that as we have seen, Miss, we have already seen that for n equal to one, any subring of Kx is finitely generated. So the answer is yes. And for n less than equal to two, in fact, more generally, with the transcendence degree of L over K is less than or equal to two, Zariski had proved that the answer is yes. So this was proved in 1954. In fact, Zariski's result was much more general. He proved that if you take any finitely generated K algebra, which is a normal domain, and L is a field, subfield of the quotient field of B, field of fractions of B, and suppose the transcendence degree of L over K is less than or equal to two, then 
intersection of L with B is finitely generated over K. So this was due to Zariski. So from this more general theorem of Zariski, it follows that here, if N equal to uh, two, uh, or if uh, the transcendence degree of L is less than equal to two, then the answer is affirmative. Okay. Now, so this was uh, so far where the transcendence degree of uh, L over K is less than equal to two, but uh, in higher dimension, there are counter examples to the Hilbert's 14th problem and this has been completely settled. So let me just uh, give you the background as the survey of this problem. So for any subfield of the polynomial field of fractions on n variables of a polynomial ring in n variable, and if A is the uh, intersection of the polynomial ring kx up to xn with L, so the question whether A is finitely generated that has an uh, negative answer and for this we have uh, the counter example the first counter example was given by nagata where the transcendence degree of l over k was 4 and n was 32 so this was quite a big number soon means in 1990 paul roberts constructed an example of transcendence degree 6 so transcendence degree of l over k is 6 and here n is equal to 7 and uh, so soon, Ms. Uh, in fact, uh, this results of Paul Roberts, uh, Frodenberg and Degley Frodenberg, uh, this two, three and four, they came as a, uh, Ms. Paul, uh, as a examples of a ring of invariants of some GA actions. So it's a, they, they, these uh, examples were uh, uh, kernels of some local important derivations. And this Paul Roberts example was in fact the symbolic Riz algebra, which was later realized as a kernel of a low component derivation by Devine and Hinston. So, so Frodenberg gave an example in uh, dimension n equal to six, and the transcendence degree is five. And soon Degley and Frodenberg got an example in transcendence degree of L over k is four. And finally, uh, Kuroda settled the problem completely for Hilbert's 14th problem when the transcendence degree of L over K is three and N is equal to four and three. So, but Kuroda's examples are not a ring of invariants of GA actions. And this is an open problem that whether uh, transcend, if uh, any subring of, uh, uh, sorry, if any ring of invariant of a GA action for n equal to four, whether the ring of invariant is finitely generated. So that is an open problem. And, uh, but uh, today, so this, uh, uh, this subring being finitely generated or not, this has been historically, has been investigated quite a bit. And uh, so now what we will do, we will try to generalize this question over any ring R. So this was a problem which was posed by Professor Onoda and Amartya Datta. So they considered any ring R and a subring of uh, R and Rx, a subring of Rx containing R. So we can ask a general question whether A is necessarily finitely generated R algebra. And note that we are not increasing the variable here x, y. So throughout uh, uh, the rest of my talk, we will be assuming that A is a subring of Rx. And we will try to pose conditions on the ring R for which this subring A is finitely generated. And uh, this answer is no, even when uh, R is a polynomial ring in one variable that is CT and T is an indeterminate. In fact, uh, this is the modification of the example which I had given in the first few slides that if you look at this uh, example, this subring of uh, Rx, generated by tx tx square, then this is not a finitely generated R algebra. In fact, this is not even Noetherian, but uh, we have an example due to Ekin, which is Noetherian, but still it is not finitely generated. So we are struck in the case, uh, even in this case. And so we will try to ask that under what additional hypothesis we can assume this, we can suppose that this ring A is a finitely generated R algebra. And here is an important theorem, well-known result due to Abhyankar, Ikin, and Heinzer, 
So they proved that when both R and A are unit factorization domain, then A is actually a polynomial ring over R. So this is a little bit of surprising, but this is a very well-known result. And uh, so when both R and A are polynomial ring, that it's actually a polynomial. Sorry, when R and A are both unique factorization domain, then A is a polynomial ring over R. So this is a very nice result. So now the aim is to how far this UFD's assumption can be dropped. So what exactly? So in general, we have seen that not, A is not even finitely generated. Forget about this nice structure. So even, so this is a result due to uh, Datta and Onoda in 2008, in their paper, they investigated when R is a complete discrete valuation ring over an algebraically closed field, and A is a Noetherian subring of Rx, then A is finitely generated over R. And there are examples over complete discrete valuation ring over an algebraically closed field where A is not Noetherian, then A is not finitely generated. So this is the theorem. In fact, they proved a much more general thing. And the statement goes like this. So for a complete discrete valuation ring with residue field small k and the field of fractions uh, capital K, Suppose the algebraic closure k bar of k is a finite extension of k. So which is same as saying that uh, k is a real closed field or an algebraically closed field. So now suppose a is a Noetherian domain containing r such that if I invert pi, it's a finitely generated k algebra and the transcendence degree of a over r is 1, then a is finitely generated over r. More generally, in particular, if A is a Noetherian subring of CT, then A is finitely generated over R. So if I assume that A is a subring of C power series T uh, X, then all these conditions are going to be satisfied and then A is finitely generated over R. Now, so this is the theorem of uh, Datta and Onoda that when R is C power series T and A is Noetherian, then A is finitely generated over R. So we can ask the question, what happens if R is C power series UV? This, instead of uh, uh, increasing the variable here, how about increasing the dimension of the ring? And suppose A is an Eudelian ring, is then A necessarily finitely generated over R? So we have found that the answer to this question is no. We have constructed an example. So the Tan Onoda have also looked at locally factorial Noetherian domains. So for locally factorial Noetherian domain, they have proved that if A is Noetherian, and this is a little bit of technical condition, that for every height one primordial P of R, PA is a primordial in A. So if I assume this condition uh, for height one primordials only, then we can show that A is finitely generated over R. And the normalization of A is isomorphic to the symmetric algebra of an invertible ideal of R. More generally, what they have proved is that, so here you note that there is no condition on R being complete or anything. And there is no condition on the, means anything. So it's just locally factorial. So this, this result can be viewed as a slight generalization of uh, Abhyanka, Rikin and Heinzer theorem. Now they, just, they studied on complete discrete valuation ring and so how far this Noetherian assumption is needed? So they realize that if I assume that A is a cruel domain containing R, and if I'm inverting pi, it's a finitely generated K algebra, and the transcendence degree of A over R is 1, then A is finitely generated over R, provided the transcendence degree of A mod P over K is positive for each associated prime ideal P of pi A. So this condition, this transcendence degree, being positive. So this is a condition which is imposed due to the dimension inequality which is being satisfied whenever A is a finitely generated R algebra. So if this condition is satisfied for every associated primordial P of pi A, then it is a finitely generated algebra over R. So we have a generalization of uh, this uh, result. So these conditions being there, so we have found this result for a two-dimensional regular complete local ring with residue field K and K bar over K is a finite extension of K. So it means that it's either a real closed field or a complex numbers. 
and suppose a is a noetherian domain containing r such that a is flat r algebra and transcendence degree of a over r is 1 further if a pi inverse is a finitely generated r pi inverse algebra and the transcendence degree of a mod p is positive for every associated primordial p of phi a then a is finitely generated over r so this result may look a bit of complicated so we have a this uh, some special version of this which says that if r is c powers is uv a is noetherian flat and it satisfies this condition and suppose there exists an element pi in the ideal this, this uh, maximal ideal uv such that a pi inverse is a finitely generated r pi inverse algebra and the transcendence degree of a mod p is positive for each p in the associated prime ideal of a mod pi a then a is finitely generated over r and now we give you the example that this uh, condition, this, this transcendence degree condition is necessary for A to be finitely generated, even if uh, A, the ring A is noetherian. So this is the exa example. So there U and V, this is a power series ring. So suppose Pn is the nth prime number and L is the, this field of, uh, so it's an algebraic extension over this field, C power series V, Laura polynomial series. So, and this is an infinite algebraic extension over this field. And then I constructed this ex elements, X naught, X1, Xn, and let D be this uh, ring generated by this X naught, X1, Xn, and A is the intersection of Rx with D, then it can be shown that A is noetherian. In fact, a cruel domain is a normal domain which is faithfully flat, but which is not finitely generated over. So this is an, one example. Further, now we discuss cruel subalgebras of Rx. So for a one-dimensional Noetherian domain and a cruel subring of Rx, then this is a theorem due to Dutta and Onoda that A is a Noetherian oh. domain. So this is a very nice result. So one-dimensional Noetherian domain, just a cruel domain, it is going to be Noetherian. And if I assume that now, if I assume that R is C power series T, then A will in fact be uh, finitely generated. So now, but this uh, result of, uh, we have generalized this result to C power series UV. So such a generalization is not possible in C power series UV. And uh, so if A is a cruel domain, then A is not uh, necessarily a Noetherian domain. And here is this example that uh, if you have C power series UV, and if I take QN, the product of uh, primes up to N, N terms, so Nth prime number is PN and QN is a product of N primes. And if I look at this S, which is a union of C power series V1 over 1 by QN, so this is an infinite integral extension over this uh, discrete valuation ring, complete discrete valuation ring. And this is, you are adjoining QNth root and if I look at these elements and the ring generated by this X naught, X1, Xn, and A be the subring of uh, Rx, so it's D intersection Rx, then uh, A is a cruel domain, but it's not a Noetherian ring. So I stop here. Any questions? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, let me ask the audience here if they have any questions. Also, people who are seeing this online, maybe they can just type a question in the chat box. And uh, so. Maybe when uh, people may think of questions. So I suppose it's not necessary that you just take the sequence of all primes, probably any sequence of prime numbers, uh, which is going to be infinite. Yes, yes, right? it's work. So it's basically, a, I wanted to, miss, you may skip some prime numbers, that doesn't matter. Right. So you want an infinite list of prime numbers. But an arbitrary, strictly increasing sequence won't work, probably. Okay. Any arbitrary increase in sequence should work. This is 
the only thing which is needed is that you need an infinite sequence of prime numbers. Infinitely many prime numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, there is something very small in your very uh, first, uh, you know, second or third slide that, I, that confused me uh, when you are talking about Hilbert sorting problem. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So you said here uh, that any the quotient field of A is, uh, is automatic, right? That there's no condition on L. No, no, I said it's a uh, condition. It will on L. follow, but it's not so obvious. No, I mean, for example, if I take L is equal to K, uh, that meets your hypothesis. No, I mean, there's something is missing, right? No, no, nothing is missing. Mm, or... So L is for the field of fractions of me. L is uh, basically A is the intersection. Oh, is the quotient field of A? No, no, sir. Oh. It will turn out that L will. Okay, 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 okay. okay. It is the quotient field of A. All right. Uh, yeah, it seems Dipendra has a question. Or... Yes. Uh, he's asking that how do you check that a ring is noetherian, non noetherian, or is easier? So, that checking is not so easy. In fact, uh, that requires a lot of work. So, what we do is that this we use some criteria like this is a theorem of Cohen and Isaac that uh, some ring is noetherian if and only if the prime ideal is finitely generated. So, this is one of the results. So we use that criteria and then deduce some lemmas from that. So in most of these examples, we have that if I invert pi, the ring is finitely generated. So in particular, noetherian. So the only prime ideals which we need to deal with are the prime ideals which are uh, contains pi. So that of course requires a work and of course, it's just not that after inverting pi, those prime ideals are finitely generated. That does not imply that uh, before localization also the prime ideals were finitely generated. So it, it's a work, it's a work. I mean, uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, sir, you're yes. completely audible. Yeah, different. So th this problem of finite generation uh, is closely related to uh, uh, another of Hilbert's problem about uh, ring of invariants, no? Yes, yes, yes. And um, uh, for ring of invariants being Noetherian and being finitely generated are the same? In some cases, yes. When th there is a grading, uh, homogeneization grading, then this is Noetherian and finitely generated are same. Okay. But in the case of group actions, the, it is a graded oh, object? Not necessarily, not always. So you not always you will have a graded object. Because fact, you, you ta not take a re representation of the group on a finite dimensional vector space and you look at the polynomial algebra and the invariant. So that's not- so It depends uh, which group are you working with. Means if it is a reductive group, those problems have been completely answered. So reductive mm, groups, mm, the ring of invariants- No, any, any subgroup of GLV operating on polynomials on V. Okay, so there are unipotent groups. Yes, yes. Yes. Uh, so that they, for them, the ring of invariant is not necessarily finitely generated. So this was the, graded rings. So they are not necessarily graded. So this example of Roberts, Frodenberg, and Degley Frodenberg. So here the ring of invariants are not finitely generated. So here the group is the additive group G. K plus. Mm. So here, these uh, subrings are not finitely generated and they are not even Noetherian. But I don't think uh, Im imposing Noetherian will help because, uh, okay, yeah, so far I don't know any Noetherian I example. Mean, my is question is whether Noetherian and finitely generated are the same for the ring of invariants. Yeah, miss, uh, I don't know because uh, in these examples, they are not even Noetherian, but uh, yes. Yeah, let me try to understand. Yeah, so Noetherian is uh, even, Miss, uh, yeah, at least these examples are not hom homogeneous. So the ring of invariant of a GI action is not necessarily homogeneous. 
so they're ne not necessary so this noetherin will imply a finitely generated that is this i don't know whether it's true yes, I, okay. I have not seen any example yeah, i mean since the table is here uh, it, there could have been cases of 3 comma 2 or 3 comma 1 3 comma 2 is not possible right because of the theorem of zariski 3 so, comma 2 is not possible zariski transcendence degree of l less than or equal to 2 so okay. they are always finitely generated okay is this theorem of zariski related to luroth's problem luroth problem mm, not exactly. If I if you are talking about Ludov's theorem, then I know that uh, then L is KT. But uh, I mean the Ludov's problem is that any subfield of a purely transcendental field is purely transcendental. Oh oh yeah. So that that is uh, I suppose that has only affirmative answers for L less than equal to two and that two only in characteristic zero. So in positive characteristic there are counterexamples, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And over algebraically closed fields. And yes, over algebraically closed fields. Okay, so this is uh, not quite of the same flavor, although it has. Yeah, but uh, of course, you need an affirmative answer to the Lura theorem. Uh, otherwise, the finite generation. Okay, yeah, I think finite generation is first needed, then you talk about the field of fractions having some structure. Mm -hmm. So, Lura theorem is very, very strong, as you are asking that the subfield is a transcendental thing purely transcendental so that is a very strong statement right it, it may be related in some ways i think Chariski, yes. uh, also did that and may have done it in similar years yes i maybe. do not know which year Lura's problem was solved mm -hmm. for dimension two but that was castel novo that was castel novo Okay, but maybe Jarisky gave uh, another proof or? Uh... Yes, it is called uh, Jarisky Castel Novo theorem. Yeah. Somehow in my memory, Jarisky's name is associated to the Lurath problem. Actually, Castel Novo, those, uh, those days things were not that formal. Yeah, okay. So Jarisky, uh, I suppose, made it uh, rigorous uh, in by our standards, something like that. I, I actually don't know the proof, but it is called Zeris. You are right. It is called Zeriski Castel Novo or Castel Novo Zeriski theorem. Okay, good, good. Good. No, beautiful talk, uh, Nina. Wonderful mathematics. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. I, just one comment I like to make that uh, yes, there is a condition that height one primes uh, will remain uh, height one uh, if uh, there is a theorem. Yeah, that, this condition, this way, height one prime ideals, this PA remains and prime ideal. So, so this will be uh, pleasant to look at if you uh, uh, if you just think of R as a UFD. Mm -hmm. And A as UFD, then it just says that uh, a prime ideal in R remains prime in A. Uh, not mm -hmm. prime ideal, prime element. Prime element. Height one prime ideals will become A, prime element. Now, uh, the hypothesis reduces to P uh, as uh, a Element P being prime. Mm, okay. The right one prime chart principle in your case. Yeah. So this condition may not look that uh, unnatural because in a UFD, this is automatically forced. So in that sense, this is a generalization of object creek in hydro. Uh, yes. This yes. is in some sense a generalization of object. Are there any further questions? Maybe I'm missing something, but what if we take R to be a regular ring here? So, so of course, the regular ring will not help, right? Because uh, you start with uh, polynomial ring CT, you have counterexample. Right, right. So even what CT, you have a counterexample. And Ikin had Noetherian subring of A is also not finitely generated. So you need to have some more hypothesis. Thank you. So maybe further questions. Uh, let's thank Nina once again for a very good answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. I stopped sharing the screen. Yes, please.